Um, yeah, this is the short demo of the work um, we all have done building a new, a new instrument for the last year. Um, unfortunately, June is not here, one of the main protagonists, and Florian Göttke, who built the hardware. He's uh, teaching in uh, Arnhem today. So, um, But Frank is here, Daniel is here, uh, I'm here, so uh, um, we can start. And act actually, until... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and until two hours ago, uh, Frank and I were still, um, uh, you know, redefining the, the setup um, and retuning it. Um, let me just uh, uh, introduce you. The controllers, how they look so far. So this is the right hand. This is, uh, I don't know, version 10 maybe. I mean, we kept on uh, reworking the shape of it. We were experimenting a lot with the metal extension here, which gives uh, a, st a stronger... Um, uh, I can hold the, the controller uh, much more firmly with the attachment here. Also with, with this area, which is the area for the thumb, that um, was a lot of um, experimenting with. Basically, that's basically the work um, <clears throat> I had to do with Florian together. Also, here we have the, the, the keys. Right now there are 11 keys. Not the full octaves um, so far, but the 12th key will be uh, implemented uh, in February. We have here a pressure sensor that is now easily, I can easily play with the middle finger or with the index finger, like that. And there is another button down here, which is uh, a modifier key that changes the the musical functionality of the keys towards a uh, functionality in terms of um, uh, changing channels and stuff like that. This is the right hand, whereas we have here the left hand controller. And as you can see, it is also wireless concerning the connection uh, to the computer. But it is not wireless concerning the new feature, uh, which is ultrasound. Receiver here and sender here, or the other way around. No. And we have here six buttons for um, different uh, functions. Here is the, the modifier, uh, modify the key or button. And here is another, um, uh, almost like a choice stick, which I use for uh, sustain and sustain and tool. Okay. It's time to hear something, right? No? Yes. <laughs> so what I prepared is the microphone. That's not just, that's such a big deal. But I didn't prepare um, this because I want you to see that. It's not very interesting, I know. <laughs> Although, this is the way of getting ready. Now, what I have to do is to turn on. I turn them off to save energy due to our concerns about nature. Because <coughs> I'm using aquas here, brand new. Hopefully they last. Uh, what else? Microphone? Ha! Huh. 
Mm -hmm. So, um, let me just uh, demonstrate something straightforward. <laughs> What I was using um, um, was the ultrasound right now, uh, scratching through the buffer. Um, I can use the ultrasound also for filter purposes, then it would probably sound something like that. I'm not yet there. Acceleration um, for the right hand, which is something like uh, that. With uh, the Y on the Y axis, I can in this setup uh, play with the region, uh, with a relative region start. With the X axis, I'll control, control the region length. start to use the pressure sensor at this point. Pitch shifting like that or freezing the sound. demonstrate was um, the last feature, which was volume control. And that is done uh, with the ultrasound as well. That was very in short what we can do with the pad right now. <laughs> um, but um, basically that's it. Can you use your own voice? Yes, I always can use my own voice. <laughs> um, but so far, um, 
it is hard to control it. This is where I am right now to um, um, use, uh, to integrate the voice material as well. I can try, but there are still some little issues with the, with the recording uh, sounds. since I can do that with my own voice as well. But um, this is where I am right now to um, use that. And this is basically an, uh, actually right now um, um, a level issue because uh, get uh, uh, the sample buffer gets overloaded sort of. With small sounds like that, that's possible. Anyways, um, that's uh, what we have so far. Questions? How long do you think it will take you to really um, accommodate this to your practice? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm really interested. I, how long will it take you to learn um, the, really the original instruments, the prototype of this one? And how long do you think this is going to take you? This is a theoretical question. You know why? Because every time I, I start simply rehearsing the instrument, I realize something needs to be fixed. So I can't really tell. And in terms of the Wii's, um, it's theoretical because I cannot really say the truth, so to speak. Now, since I just started working with those, um, um, I, I, I think I'll be, be much better in another week if I would work on that every, every day for two hours. Assuming there won't uh, appear any problems. And, and does it feel different than playing the Louise? Totally. This is a complete different instrument for me. And uh, it um, it can think it, you can do things with it with what you couldn't with the Wii's. Um, but on the other hand, you cannot do things what you could have done uh, with the Wii's. It's a complete different approach. You know, diff uh, well, since now I have the ultrasound. This is a new feature, which uh, is uh, more, in a sense, more precise, I think, um, as the Wii, compared to the Wii's. And then it's also according to um, um, the way the software is set up. Mm -hmm. But you may have said there's certain things you can't, you could do with the Wii's that you can't do with this one. What are the ways specifically thinking of? I mean, with the Wii's you were playing with both hands, you're playing sound with both hands. Here you modify with the sound with the left hand, you trigger sound with the right hand. That seems obvious, but as a difference, but what else? Well, well it, it's, it's due to the, the way they look, the way uh, the, the Wii's are um, 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 the same for left and right hand. There's a, 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 a big thing. And that made it easy to program, because I realized with the Wii's, that I, um, what I do with the right hand in terms of functionality, I apply that to the left hand. Just make made sure that it's uh, the opposite in terms of uh, the X axis, for instance, instead of going like this, you know. So I, I was just according to the human, 
the functionality towards the human uh, body and the, the way we work. Here, with these two controllers, since they are completely different in shape, but also in their functionality, since this is more a functionality, not, not only, but it's uh, but, um, there is a stress on functionality on the left hand controller, while this is more the control of the actual music making uh, process. And since they are so different in shape uh, and in functionality, you have to uh, think differently. And, and, and you have to uh, split the brain a little bit more, maybe. But it's also a question of, uh, of learning it, because you're basically dealing with something analogous to, to a, a guitar or a string instrument where you don't have the same right. function for the left hand and the right hand, whereas your knees were the analogy of a keyboard instrument, which you yes. use the same but mirror it. Mm -hmm. I noticed just while I was thinking about this thing, I noticed that your Remember you had uh, problems with your uh, wrists, with the knees, from the, from the weight and the way you're using them. Uh, are you aware of anything that might happen with this instrument? I see you balancing much more on the left foot, for instance, now. Interesting. Seeing you doing this here. Uh -huh. uh, uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, so far it's okay. I, uh, once I uh, realize some strain in here, I just change the position. I make this looser or or or, str uh, or fix that. I don't know. So far, it's, it's kind of okay. He's still there. <laughs> it's also the control is not based on, on rotating, but now it's more on the keys, so you don't have to. It requires less activity, I guess. Yeah. Well, and the reason why I had this problem uh, in this performance was there, there were many factors why this happened. There was uh, the performance situation, uh, was a premiere, and then I was, uh, was actually I was sick. So uh, there was no backup concerning the body. So things like that happen if many things come together. Um, um, I don't think that, well, you never know, but uh, I hope this won't happen with these once. Yeah, so um, what I can do now, since I demonstrated it to you, I uh, can try to make some music, <laughs> um, if, you, if you like. Piano piece I've written some years ago, and the pianist has to work a lot inside the piano. And um, so there are um, uh, also very strong hits and strong um, uh, percussive elements um, done on the frame of the piano, which I'm working a lot with in here. And that's always very uh, handy. Oh, due to our concerns to nature, I have to um, change the battery now. Needs a lot of uh, energy. But I guess this is nothing new for you.
<laughs> so that's uh, what we have so far. <laughs> Master reset. Doesn't help. I don't know. Battery should be fine. Um, yeah. Do you have a new data? No. Nothing. It's frozen. Maybe it's frozen or is there no new data? There's no data. The CP load gives some information. No, it's in battery. It's a new one. Yeah, but it's apparently not powerful. If we just write it. Coordination. Okay. One minute wouldn't be read out properly in one. Okay. So what was the solution? The solution then is uh, quit the program, unplug everything, switch everything off, basically do a reboot, not of the computer but of the hardware. But as I said, normally when Alex is doing performance, he will change batteries during performance, uh -huh. but before. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And now he's not using the rechargeable batteries, which are much more powerful, uh -huh. but he uses ordinary batteries, mm -hmm. which are on the verge of yeah. being strong. Hmm. Uh, again. With, uh, this.
That's where I am. <laughs> so does it, um, does it feel like your instrument? Hard like question at this point. It's hard to actually compare, first of all. Um, a commercial product is what you get is what you have. Here, it's like a journey with open end, um, apparently. That means it's all question of process. With a weed, you, you cannot change their functionality. It's just uh, that's the way it is. Um, with those, uh, it is really hard to, to answer this question because uh, um, this is what I had in mind at yeah, for, for so, quite some time, actually. Um, and the um, thing is that I'm not at this point where I want to be at, you know, where I can say I can control everything. Like, this is, of course, a question of practice. But it is also a question of um, um, uh, how you set, set it up. And what I like about this uh, controller here is now I have the um, um, possibility to actually um, uh, control the pitches. This is something I couldn't do beforehand uh, with, with the weeds. And this, is, this was very important to me. Um, what well, that means for um, the performance outcome, I don't know. <laughs> so, this is a, this is, um, um, yeah. Since you have been, I mean, Tago says we've been working a year on this, which sounds really dramatically long. <laughs> uh, but uh, you have been here during intervals, and most of the time we have been talking about the concept and so on. How much time have you really played with the instrument? In this year, two days. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so there's hardly any time yet being spent on really playing with it. No. And do you have the feeling that now there is the starting point that you can really start to play with it? Yeah. I have the feeling that I'm. I'm, I'm yeah. I can start now. Beforehand, well, the first half was. The first half of this year was building the, the right hand. And at the very last moment, we built the left hand. So that is very fresh and very new. And um, yeah, it's, it, it takes its time. I mean, I the, the problem is also I, uh, I also I need to um, exist. <laughs> so um, uh, in the meantime, while I'm not here, I hardly do anything on the on the instrument. Mm -hmm. Can I have a question? Um, how much are you depending on the screen in navigating your program? A lot now. Uh, right now. Right now. But is it like something integral to the instrument or is it gonna be like just learning guitar you at some point won't look at it, you'll just play and listen? Well this is the ideal situation not to yeah. look at the screen. Yeah. That's where it's gonna go as far. Well. If you Hopefully. used to look on the screen with the wheels, uh, Excuse it? me? If you had to look at the screen with the wheels when you learned playing that? Depends on what, what I'm playing with the wheels. Oh, okay. When I'm improvising, not. But if I'm doing a certain piece, then I have to uh, double check. Mm -hmm. What were you looking for at this point? Was now I am looking at um, controllers, if they are activated or not, mm -hmm. and if I activated other controllers by accident. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Double, double check it, basically. Well, just a really abstract question, which is pretty silly at this point, but aside from screen, what can you think of that you can get that kind of feedback? Oh, I worked this one, or I, I worked, uh, I mean, something went wrong, something went right. Can you um, sort of elaborate on that? Instead of imagining you don't have a screen, how could you have this kind of feedback um, about the state of the in this case, it's more like software or the hardware, if it's working or not, obviously. But um, just I don't take. I don't understand. What I'm saying, trying to say is like, it's just say instead of a visual information about what's going on, the hardware or the software, can you think of any other means <coughs> of um, transferring this information to like tactile, like a vibration? Or, I don't know. Just Absolutely. Ab abstract yeah. question. Never thought about this. Okay. Like how can you get feedback? For example, now if you didn't have the screen yeah. and you press the wrong button, would you be able to understand it out of the sound? Or this, any is a, this is a question of experience and, and yeah. practice. If you have uh, practiced this instrument the way it's set up uh, uh, in depth, the way I did with the Wii, mm -hmm. uh, then um, you narrow down the possibilities wh where it went to, so, so, so to speak. Right now, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just too new that I, I cannot play without them. Yeah. I could, but then, then it's getting more into random kind. Of. Yeah. If I understand right, what you're doing right now is navigating uh, uh, the expert features from the standard feature. Right? Expert meaning uh, you're using the modifiers to go into changing individual parameters in a very specific way. Uh, which you then don't know whether it happened or not, whereas if you don't, if you know that there's a couple of parameters that work together anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. the high level and the low level. Yes. And when going into the low level, you need at this moment, if I understand right, to the screen to verify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Whereas with the Wii's, the same level hierarchy existed, of course, and if I, if what you're saying is uh, the sound actually helped you to understand what, mm -hmm. that's the feedback, mm -hmm. feedback number one, I would imagine. Okay. Um, Michelle used to have a little readout. Which What's that? He was, Michelle used to have a little readout, uh, 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 visual number display. Mm. I mean, the question is, is, is <laughs> what alternative ways would there be, you know, I mean, apart from uh, visual things? Yeah. Well, the most important thing is the way the, the, the buttons are being programmed. And the Wii setup was in such a way that it was all extremely simple. Something was on when you pressed the button and off when you didn't. Mm. And the way this is programmed has an extended feature, which on <coughs> one hand is very nice, but on the other hand, very often <coughs> could bring you in a state that you don't know if it's on or off anymore. Mm. It's this mode if you press a button and hold it, then you have some kind of control or old sound, you release the button, it's gone. So mm. then you know exactly what you're doing. But that there's a special mode when you press the big key very shortly, mm. you turn the feature on. And then you can go on what you were doing. So after playing with that controller for a little while and doing other stuff, and suddenly you're like, uh, did I put it on or off? You don't know anymore. Okay. Well, if you always would have to hold down a certain button to do that, mm -hmm. then you know where you are. That's the biggest danger you have with this kind of system now. But you use like lights, like when you, you, you use in a stereo installation or something, you press a button. Exactly. Yeah. But then, of course, you need a visual feedback. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be easily done on a screen, but then we come back to the point. It's not so nice if you have a performer yeah. Looking who's so, yeah. doing yeah. like that. It's even better, I would suggest that to you, if you would do a performance uh, like in a couple, a couple of weeks where you would like to look at the screen, put the laptop on the floor because then you are performing in front of the audience and you're just looking down, which a lot of artists are doing when they're performing. Mm -hmm. And it's less distracting than when you are playing like this. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to have a glass and a fancy thing. I was thinking of a mask, seriously. They do it, that would be so... Yeah, I was thinking... <laughs> well, we also did some... Uh, uh, I remember a performance uh, that Michel did where he projected his visa screen just on the oh, screen yeah. behind the audience. Yeah. 
<laughs> which worked extremely well, actually. Yeah. The people were looking at him, and he was looking at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now, in comparison, you have um, some continuous controllers, so you have the, uh, the distance, with yes. the, the ultrasound, okay. you have a pressure. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other continuous controller or is this this? Yeah, the, yeah, and the, the right hand. Uh -huh. Up uh, X and Y axis. Okay. And then the rest are all discrete on off buttons for the notes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. And what I also noticed is that you, you, it's probably part of the learning process, hmm. but you use the ultrasound very little. Most of your stuff is still about these kind of movements. And then sometimes you certainly, I see you sort of make the mental switch, oh, I'm going to use this. But it's, it's not part of the performance yet. Hmm. That's my feeling about it. Hmm. The well, way you see it. There are many reasons for that. that uh, again, practice, but also. Um, Decisions are made right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, musical decisions. Yeah. It's also, um, I think the, this gesture is a bit more odd. Yeah. And much more characteristic. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to overuse it. Um, I, I think so too. But also maybe, maybe thinking of placing the, the transmitter to, to the side or lower or something. Or, or make the <laughs> angle uh, wider. <laughs> So that it doesn't matter if you move like this, or like that, or like that. Uh. So you have more freedom. You still know, okay, this distance is important, but it's not so important that I really have to aim it. Uh. Yeah. Because that, that's what I noticed. You focus on it. Oh, I have to. But isn't the auto sound actually quite directed? Yeah, but it's an easy way to make it more. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> instrument is drastically different from the Wii. There's less, um, there's definitely more control, yeah, and much more, more gesture, yeah. and you're doing less, uh, you're compensating less with your body and theatrics. There's less faking going on. Yeah. Right here? Yeah. With the Wii, you're compensating much more, because you have such simple controls, and you're adding a lot more than what actually the sound is doing. But here, every movement, I don't know. You see it much more direct. It's, um, I, I have the same feeling, but I also think it's part of the fact that now it's just exploring yeah. instead of doing yeah. playing. Yeah, I think so. And the faking part wasn't much. That was maybe at the beginning. Yeah. At the end, there is no faking, unless. Uh, there no, is it's not much faking. It's about a sort of over. Yeah, expressing. It's, it's the momentum you put in the yeah. the gestures. Right now, without you, I mean, the, it seems like it's responding much more. So you're getting much more detail. Uh, it seems like there's more resolution hmm. in the controller. So you have much more, the, the instrument feels much closer to you. Whereas the Wii was always something that, like a remote control. You grab it and you're controlling something. Now it feels like it's much more directly, there's a direct connection between you and the sound and the software. Interesting. Um, so I'm quite happy with sort of how close they're up. And um, I think it's just uh, figuring out what works. Like this, this gesture is definitely something you have to think about it. Um, as it is now, so if you have a performance in the next three weeks, then you're going to have to. Yeah, you have to think of how to deal with this. If <laughs> you just do it once. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, yeah, the sounds, like, uh, I think figuring out, there's some sounds that work extremely well, mm -hmm. like when you're triggering something and you're moving it forward, or when you're doing this kind of stuff.
Okay, uh, um, um, my name is Che Jun Yong. I play CD players. Um, basically, uh, I open up the leads and and let the the spinning of CD e exposed, so that I could uh, could control with my hand and make a error sound or put objects on the surface of CD. Mm, yeah, so I, I could do lots of different things on the CD players. Are you, are you playing the sound from the CD or are you playing the sound, uh, the physical sound? Uh, both, both. Um, first, I only play the sound of CD but uh, yeah, I got interested in more in the sounds of surface of CD by uh, putting some objects. So I could switch yeah, acoustic acoustic sound and the the audio sound. Yeah. Uh, my name is Hong Chul Gi, and I play with two tables with some different kinds of objects, especially found abandoned objects. And I, uh, I used to, I still play uh, uh, electronic improvised music, but uh, I've, I, uh, I found that it's a uh, very interesting to play without electricity or of course, I need electricity to spin the platter, but uh, without electricity or, or, or electronics, uh, but still making uh, the quality of sound I want, like uh, like the sound I make with the electronics, like feedback or, or uh, very high frequency piercing sounds. Uh, at first, I I followed the the, the pioneers of the the uh, turntablist making noise, that music or, or or DJing or, or scratching. So, and then I found out uh, it can be done. It could be done without without even without the cartridge or stylus. Uh, so and then I found out more interesting quality of the sound of uh, acoustics, but still uh, very noisy and and very complex. Mm -hmm. So yes, so uh, basically it's like a yeah this kind of scratching objects against the platter. <laughs> And my name is Yuhan Gil and I play typewriter and snare. That's all. Uh, it's typewriter connected with uh some contact microphone and this makes uh, some motors running so if I type something it works with motor together so then motor strikes the snare and I, I use that Yes, uh, that's why I used typewriter. I I hope to. Uh, how can I say? Usually, some people using typewriter as an instrument, but uh, I checked uh, some artists who using typewriter as an instrument. 
they used just kind of drum machines or something and they didn't type uh, they didn't write some word but i think typewriter is just kind of typing machine to write something and i like that function and so i think just write something can make different sound or different structure of music or or something yeah that's why i used typewriter and i'm maintaining its own function Korean underground music is mm, like any other place. There are lots of different music, but especially for music that we that we are playing, it's very uh, tiny, tiny scene. So I guess uh, there are. About ten people. Of course, there are other uh, older generation who play free jazz, but we don't have any connection to them. Uh, we we all have different backgrounds, like rock or techno, but we uh, we gathered. 2004 and yeah we we started from 2004 and just just putting out yeah concerts and yeah <laughs> mm, anybody want to add something <laughs> Uh, actually, Korean underground music is uh, very young because it emerged in mid '90s, and also, yeah, of course, it developed and expanded a lot from that time, from that moment. But still, I think it's not that uh, that stable. So, and the scene is not so big because it's only in Seoul and some other cities. But there's very tiny scene. So, basically, so underground scene is not so strong. And we are a very tiny part of that weak underground scene. Uh, Junyoung and I started uh, playing noise music from mid '90s, but we didn't have a <coughs> sorry, we didn't have a friends to play with or or any any other musicians we can collaborate. So uh, we, were, we were kind of in a low profile for a while. And then 2003, four, we found out about the uh, free music concert series uh, organized by Japanese guitarist named Sato Yuki. So we we joined them, and then we started to play more actively. And then uh, one of our friend Angel, yeah, yeah, he friends he uh, decided to play improvise music together and then we started our own concert series from 2004 or 5 uh, and it's, so we uh, <coughs> and Hangil can add about that no, I, I don't have any <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the main of organizer of that, that series really because of I just Because of I, I'm uh, only educated in art school, and they, they didn't. So I just know how to get fund from art foundation. So that's why I <laughs> organize concert and funding. And then we discussing about uh, we listen many musics, and 
we discussing who is good for collaborate with us and then we take fun and we invite most of them to Korea and we then we experience many musics and then we developed our own musics and activities and almost three or four years later uh, we can invite it from outside of Korea I, I, I cannot remember how can we go to Europe first time Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so for us, it's making network with other artists is best, very important thing, and it can be it can be expanded to our activities to outside of Korea. But yes, but Korean underground music scene, especially us, is ti very tiny still and very difficult to maintaining this works. Mm, yes. Yeah, uh, about our instruments. Mm. Everybody have different ideas, but I think the common idea is that we are uh, we don't want to be very skilled playing our instruments. We rather focus on, on the, the sound quality. Uh, we, we chose these instruments not because they are, they are like, uh, visually attractive. We chose these instruments because of the sound quality. So some people misunderstood that you know we want to like show people that the you know is visually you know, unique. But we chose these instruments because it sounds yeah so it makes sounds that we like. Uh, but uh, the the reason we got to this got to to this uh, level because we cannot play the conventional music instruments. Uh, we we don't have any education about the like playing piano or had that kind of musical education. You did? Oh, okay. <laughs> I learned piano a little bit too. Yeah, much. yeah, me too, when I was very young. <laughs> but so, uh, and then, uh, because it's very cheap, and everybody is throwing out CD players, yeah, for example, uh, on my case, they started using MP3 players. So I, I asked my friends to give me their CD players and they just gave me. So it, even though it, I could break it, it doesn't matter because it's so cheap and there are tons of CD players. Yeah, that could be one reason. Mm. And okay. Uh, yes, um, f our, about our instrumentation. Uh, from the beginning, uh, in, in mid-90s, I played noise music and also indie rock too, but uh, I, like, I really like the idea of uh, self-teaching because uh, maybe I was unlucky to meet a very good creative teacher, but yeah, from, from my life experience, I didn't have a, a good music teacher so I really like to be self-taught especially with, yeah yeah so I when I started play guitar I, uh, I just listen to records and play like everybody else and then um, also uh, so like like this on table for example 
lectern table I play, I cannot teach to somebody else to play with these this, uh, two tables without needles. And, and also, um, I really like the some parts of a uh, very marginalized part of the sound world. Like, uh, like if, if you play guitar and record it on the tape, uh, I really like this hiss or hum of the tape. So I really focused on that kind of that part of the sound actually. And then, and, and also, so I developed myself in that field. So I think that's why I reached this kind of uh, to this kind of instrumentation. <laughs> I can. Uh, yeah, I guess girlfriend is uh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's too good for Angel. <laughs> girlfriend is here. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what's that?